Welcome back to EWTN's special coverage from Rome as we remember Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. We are so grateful to be joined by our first guest, Cardinal George Pell, served as the inaugural prefect of the Secretariat for the Economy. He's the former Archbishop of Sydney, Australia. Your Eminence, welcome. When did you first meet Pope Benedict? I think it was about 1990. I was appointed to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. So I was still in uh, Melbourne as an auxiliary. So I'd come over for a meeting uh, once a year or so. So I met him uh, when he was prefect of the uh, Doctrine of the Faith. Wow. And tell us about your interactions with Pope Benedict. Uh, well, first of all, there uh, was very formal. Uh, material was distributed beforehand. Everyone was supposed to have read it. It was a pretty good uh, group of people. I think they had read the material. Uh, then everyone in turn would speak. I was a junior person. Uh, once he started with me, I think, to see whether I had anything to say myself. <laughs> uh, and did you? And, and I did, I did, I did. Uh, but I really, I don't think I've ever encountered a man who was so good, he would briefly introduce the topic. Uh, then when everybody mm. had spoken, he would synthesize what was said, he would analyze it, and then spell out his position. I've never encountered anyone who was better uh, at that uh, than he was. He was a, a very formidable intellectual mm. and uh, an enormously uh, well-educated theologian, and, and in many other areas too. Yeah. Uh, Your Eminence, you welcomed uh, Pope Benedict to Sydney uh, for World Youth Day. What was that like to have a pope travel to Australia, and what was the impact that you saw on Australia itself? Well, I was uh, very pleased. We were delighted in Australia. We're a long way away, of course, <laughs> uh, to get a pope uh, to, uh, to come to us. Um, people were impressed uh, by him. I mean, his uh, early image was totally misleading. Mm. It wasn't that he changed. It's just that uh, because he was appearing so frequently in public, people could see that the caricatures um, about um, Panzer Cardinal uh, were, were just uh, wrong. Um, he spoke uh, beautifully. We had uh, more overseas visitors than the Beijing Olympics, which was uh, later uh, in that year's. The final mass was the biggest uh, so the biggest gathering in Australian history. And of course, um, the Holy Father was a great man for the liturgy. He insisted that it be prayerful and adoration. And he was enormously successful. I remember he, being able to hear the birds after communion at the final mass with 400,000 people uh, with, with Benedict, which is, says quite something for the recollection and quiet and peace and prayer of, of that group. And there was such a generational divide, it seemed, between Pope Francis and world youth who, who'd, who'd yeah, come to well, Australia. Yeah, well, I know I'm not too much into that. Uh, uh, children get on well with their grandparents. Well, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, he, uh, he was a very educated man, and he was used to listening to people so he could address uh, their problems, and he'd do it clearly uh, and elegantly. But, yes, he was a, there was a great... Uh, um, uh, a great uh, difference in years, but uh, uh, often young people like their grandparents. Well, they seem to love him. Uh, they did, they, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Like, like the people who are turning up at the moment. Right. Um, your Eminence, you mentioned the liturgy, his love for the liturgy. While you're now more known for your economic reforms and the tasks, <laughs> that one of the major missions you had for the church for about 10 years was working on the translation uh, of the Roman Missal into English, which now, yes, uh, almost yes. 10 years on, the whole English-speaking world uses. Uh, for most of that time, it began with John Paul, but it came to fruition under Benedict. You must have had a lot of conversations with him about the liturgy and about that collaboration. What can you share with us, what you learned from him on the liturgy? Um, well, I read uh, a lot uh, of his writings on the liturgy. I think uh, from him more than anyone, I learned just how important the liturgy is uh, in maintaining the health of the church. Um, he, uh, he was a German. 
Uh, and like many Germans, he was uh, very sympathetic towards English speakers, uh, perhaps especially the British. Um, he understood our problems, uh, and he understood the importance of an accurate, non-ideological uh, translation. So first of all, that was when he was at uh, Doctrine of the Faith on the translation of the Catechism. And then he, f our, our work was a bit controversial. I mean, well, I think it's the translation has settled into place now. But he backed us all the way because he understood uh, all we were trying to do was to get uh, an accurate and appropriate translation of what was in the English, mm. uh, in the Latin text. When you look at Pope Benedict's life as a theologian, what do you think will be his greatest contribution? Ah, that's a, uh, a very good... I think his greatest contribution is that he fulfilled the job description of Pope, uh, which you find in uh, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John. Uh, as Pope, he was the foundation man of the church, the rock man. Uh, and uh, the principal role of the Pope is uh, to maintain the purity and clarity of church doctrine so that the people in the pews are being taught what Christ and the apostles taught. And uh, as successor of Peter, he has the power of the, key, the keys uh, to rule um, that something is not compatible with the apostolic tradition. Uh, and of course, he's there to strengthen the faith of his brothers and sisters. And... Um, I mean, I'm just so pleased that so many tens of thousands of people are streaming uh, past uh, his corpse as it lies uh, in state. These are the people who are speaking, ordinary battlers from the pews, mm -hmm. their families, people mightn't be perfect, mightn't even be at church uh, every Sunday, but understand the beauty of what we've got in the Catholic Church. They're, they're Benedict's people. And they're here in droves. Absolutely. I think 65,000 were estimated yesterday. We Which was double what they estimated, yeah. uh, what they anticipated. And nonstop today. It continues tomorrow. When you look at Pope Benedict's writings, what do you think his legacy will be there? What's his greatest writing, in your opinion? I'm not sure that I could usefully um, answer that. Perhaps his three volumes on Christ. Mm. Uh, his attempt to... Uh, reconcile the historical critical method uh, with uh, the tradition of the church and a proper understanding and uh, making it quite clear that uh, we uh, traditional Christians, we Catholics, uh, for us truth is fundamental. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing a discussion on the scriptures uh, on the BBC and all the participants uh, thought that the truth was it was just what had been said that was useful for propaganda purposes. Now, um, Benedict was totally opposed uh, to that. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wrote three beautiful volumes there. So that, that might be his greatest contribution. He was remarkable for the extent and variety uh, of his writings. Um, Your Eminence, what might you suggest about the, cat the role of the catechism? Could anybody else have brought that project out in six years' time? with the breadth and the beauty of that text? Uh, no, well, there's no one with his uh, capacity. Uh, I suspect he's had almost no speechwriters uh, because <laughs> nobody could write as well uh, as, uh, as uh, he could. Uh, mind you, there was a lot of very good people. It was an enormous exercise in collegiality, the catechism. And with the help of computers, you were able they were able to bring in thousands and thousands of comments uh, from around uh, the world. And uh, Cardinal Schoenborn worked on it. I mean, he's uh, no mean theologian uh, scholar himself. But um, uh, I think the partnership of uh, the then Cardinal Ratzinger and Pope John Paul II mm -hmm. was one of the most brilliant in papal history. And uh, a lot of people who grew up under them thought that uh, the papacy was always like that. It's really like that. <laughs> so it was a, a, a blessed time to be alive, and you were involved. Yeah, it was. And, and you it was a great time. <laughs> a, great, a high time in the life of the church. 
it was. Yeah, Your Eminence, uh, one of the, the great concerns of, of Joseph Ratzinger and then Benedict XVI is the, the risk, the dangers of secularism, of relativism. Could you talk a little bit about his concerns? Because I know that this is something of a concern for you as well. Um, yes, well, he, I think his uh, uh, sermon when he mentioned the dictatorship of relativism, that's been uh, exemplified now. Uh, in which so much of the old uh, liberal consensus is uh, threatened, where in the past uh, we prided ourselves uh, on uh, the freedom of the individual to, to, to speak. We uh, almost went, you could say, you almost went to war uh, to defend uh, free speech. And, and now uh, you've got people who are racing around claiming that they're offended. Uh, well, I mean, if we Catholics tried to close down the discussion every time we were offended, <laughs> public discussion would be radically reduced. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, question of identity, group identity, that what's uh, not important as the, the truths at, at issue, but what tribe you come from. Mm. I mean, that's a, that's a regression. It's not civilization. And he was right to warn uh, about it. Your Eminence, final question while we have you. Looking back at Pope Benedict's life, what are you most grateful for? Um, I think I'm most grateful, uh, this is a, a selfish Australian point of view, for the fact that he came out to us for World Youth Day. I think he's being buried in the, the charitable the vestments that he used in the Sydney World Youth Day. I'm. I thought that originally was Australian propaganda, <laughs> uh, but they assure me that it, it is uh, right. But um, if that is the case, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. But uh, he was also a friend, and uh, uh, I was almost surprised how sad I was when mm. he went. I knew I'd miss him. Yeah. And um, what is really important, of course, is that the legacy of... John Paul the Great and Benedict survives and thrives. Mm. Now, there are other traditions to be developed, complementary, that's very good, but they represent an essential strain in Catholicity that is vital for our health. Not always po popular, but um, vitally necessary for, to, to, be, to be faithful to Christ. We are so grateful for your insights this week. Thank you for being with us and our condolences because it is, it is a loss for all of us. And Cardinal George Pell, thank you so much, Your Eminence. A pleasure.